September 14th, 2021 was play day three of stage three of the NAL. The matchups were Astralis versus Oxygen, Dark Zero versus Mirage, Sonics versus Xset, and TSM versus Beast Coast. And let's just get into what went down. So for the first game of the day, Astralis took on Oxygen and they went to Coastline. This is the first of the two coastlines of the day, and we've seen it a few times so far during the stage. It's pretty popular thus far. Astralis manages to take the first two rounds fairly convincingly. The second round is actually an ace from J90, and it's a technical ace. So we didn't see any aces last stage, uh, stage two of the NAL, and I think the only one we saw in stage one was the, that on Kino's debut, his very first round, he got an ace. And so this one, J90 gets four kills straight up, and then one kill he downs and DP fire finishes. But with the new system, if you down somebody, and then even if somebody else confirms the kill, whoever confirms the kill, it'll say their name in the kill feed, but it counts as whoever downs that person as getting the kill. So in the old system, it wouldn't have been an ace, and we'd still be aceless for, you know, however long. But I guess we're going to give it to J90. Um... The new system makes things a little bit interesting too. I'm not sure if it should or does or whatever affect the opening kills and like, um, you know, multi kills and all this stuff. Uh, I'm not positive if, if you should go by who really gets the kill or if you should go by who it says in the kill feed. Um, sort of undetermined at this time. But anyways, let's show that, uh, let's show that ace right here. But not quite the same. Uh, nightmare for people. Well, nightmare for vertical. With this double wall, which is why we might start to see Maverick's pick rate continue to go high, and we could even see a Thermite or an Ace use more, and oh no, those are the pings that are going in. Running out of time, there's only 10 seconds remaining, and Astralis is J90, will find kill number three. Yaga goes down, no Ace available as DP Fire picks up another kill, though it's been J90 all the way down. And they're just looking for Fox A. J90 will actually get it, and that is a bug. It was unless, unless, here's one thing to consider. Oh. There was a change that was made very recently where if oh. you get the down and somebody else secures it, True, I you're about that. credited with the kill. So it is entirely possible, though we did not see it, it is entirely possible that J90 got the down and it was only DP fire to secure, <laughs> thus giving J90 the technical ace. Okay, epic clip. Uh, it's not the best because you don't get to see all of the kills and they're not, it's not like they're all back to back and it's super cool. But still, an ace nonetheless. Um, right, so Astralis takes the first, the first two rounds and then Oxygen answers back with six rounds of their own. They, they start winning and they don't stop winning until they get to match point. And then Astralis manages to win two rounds of their own, one of them even being a flawless, and then Oxygen just closes it out. So, we haven't seen an overtime game yet throughout the NAL. Um, and even through the rest of the day, we won't all of them finish in regulation. Right, so you can see entry stats and stuff. Uh, you, you can see um, Chain Hano, which is doing it all. He got a 5k and two 4ks, and he planted one round and uh, went 4 0 on entry. He did everything he possibly could. Uh, nobody else on his team went positive on kills. I think Retro only dropped one kill. So Jay Nano got 21 more kills than him and 22 times as many kills than him and all this stuff. Uh, Auction did pretty well for themselves. They were, uh, I think like three of them were positive or maybe four or something. And they were all, they were all like fairly close on kills. It was a team effort. Uh, good game by Auction and they're looking quite excellent in this stage thus far. So let's move on to the second game. Clubhouse, Dark Zero versus Mirage. So Mirage historically has liked Clubhouse, but they just lost to, I think it was SSG um, in the first or second play day. Uh, but before that, they were on like a four win streak or something. And Dark Zero, now having picked up Canadian, uh, you'd think that they'd be excited to play Clubhouse going into this because Canadian, it was, I mean, it was always, it was Dubhouse and whatever when he was on SSG, he helped pioneer that whole SSG roam. And they were on like this massive win streak for a lot of games in a really long period of time. And also NJR, when he was on Disrupt and, um, and maybe even before Disrupt, before he was in, a in NAL, uh, he was just a monster on Clubhouse. So uh, people were talking about, I think the analysts were talking about, they were unsure who this was swing towards, you know, with Canadian and NJR on DZ side, and then Mirage generally being good at Clubhouse, but just faltering in their last game. But it turns out it was advantage for DZ. Mirage is just looking a little bit lost this stage. Um, so in the first stage, right, they, they did pretty well. Like they were losing, they lost several games, but then they made a, a crazy comeback to, they won like every game at a certain point. 
uh, to secure third place for themselves, and that was mostly off the back of Hot and Cold's play, who continues to look like the best player in NA because I think after after I th well after this play day, I think because several people got knocked down below him, he's now the top rated player again. He's only played two games, whereas several people have played uh, three games because SSG had their bye today. Right, so, but Mirage got third play, and then the last stage, they ended up in seventh. I mean, still above x and Beast Coast, but uh, seventh is not really where you want to be. And now they're cur they're currently, after this day, in dead last because as because of the results of the other games, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, yeah, so Mirage loses game 0-3. They, I mean, they went down 5-1, on their attacking half, not great, but not unsalvageable on Clubhouse. It's possible that they could do the same on their own defensive half. And they, they get they win this round, you know, they win round seven. But then in round eight, um Dark Zero wins and six two overtime is pretty daunting. You have to win four rounds in a row just to push overtime. And then Mirage, you know, they're getting on a little bit of a streak. Round nine they win, and then round ten they win. And in this round, loading gets a four K on Mira. I'm gonna show that clip now. Rest of this push all shaping up over by Jacuzzi, and there it goes. NJR a bit of negligence. He goes down to a nitro cell, but they'll lose the black mirror in the process. Whoa! Loading, what a shot on the Pambazoo, hopping up and really taking the fight to Dark Zero. This man is a one man army, and he is currently making them pay for it. They'll have to thread the needle to try and hit Canadian, but the Thermite decides that maybe I'll just go for the fight instead. And he'll survey the wreckage, but there's nobody really giving themselves up. Another body from DZ will fall as a hyper, and the two players still standing are staring down a flawless from Mirage. Down goes Canadia, 15 seconds. And Mirage really seemed to understand this defense. Okay, yeah. I mean, you know, nice 4K. The first first two kills, uh, the C4 read was nice, and then and then the second kill is very nice as well. And then the other kills just sort of fell in place. The last one, I mean, anyone could have got it. It was like a it was a 1v5, and then it was a 1v4 when he actually got the kill. 4v1, 5v1, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but then in the 11th round, DZ secures the round, and it is in flawless flat fashion. So Dark is looking quite good. I don't think I'm going to do a power rankings here, because at the end of this day, so many teams are tied. And I think you could establish power ranking, but I think it's a little bit unclear. I think hopefully things should be much more clear after play day four. Okay, so let's move into the final game. Or not the final game, the third game, rather. Uh, another Coastline game. This is Sonics versus Xset. They play on Coastline, and Sonics, just last week, they beat uh, they beat Space Station on Coastline. So, I mean, I guess they were feeling confident on it. Um, but it, more and more, it looks like Coastline is where good teams go to die. Uh, and... Uh, may, didn't Xset play on Coastline? They played... Um, I'm actually, I'm struggling to remember. Didn't they just play on Coastline against, who did they play? I guess I could just check. Did they play Astralis on, yeah, they played Astralis on Coastline and they lost. Okay, so. There's a curious hierarchy developing where, you know, like one team will beat, team one will beat team two and then team two will beat team three and team three will beat team one sort of thing. So it's unclear who's actually better than whom in uh, the grand scheme of things. We'll just have to see how the points develop through the stage, of course, but in terms of tie breaks and just uh, the chain of command and all this, it just seems weird. But right, so don't know what happened here because everyone and their mother thought Sonic was gonna win. I mean, I if you watched the predictions video, I mean, I said that was the one that was I was most confident about and that everyone was most confident about. I think I looked on CGG and wherever they get the poll from, maybe Twitter or whatever, 91% uh, of people, I think, thought Sonics were going to win this game and of course you'd expect I mean X set was 0-2 and, and Sonics were 2-0 and, and X set is Historically the worst team in the league and Sonics are were at the the top of the league Throughout the three stages So I mean what happened? I I, I don't know I don't know if uh, Sonics were just having a bad week or maybe X set is finally on the boss up and I'm, I'm getting a little bit tired of saying that because um I said it predicting the next game, for, and I said maybe, you know, you know, Beast Coast was looking good and TSM struggled a little bit, so maybe. Um, and also last stage when Xset took on TSM, I talked about that in a previous video, how, like, ooh, Xset's a little bit on the come up and TSM struggled a little bit uh, in the last, like, week, so maybe something happened, but then they get crushed. Uh, right, but Xset wins 7-3. to three. This was one of the most dominant games we've seen from the stage. I think the most dominant besides the... Well, tied for the most dominant, besides the one that we're about to cover, the TSM Beast Coast one. In round, um, 
Well, Grixter gets a 4k in round 7, but the clip I want to show from this one is in round... Um, what round is it? Let me, let me see. It's in round... 8, yeah. In round 8, Sonics go up 4-2 on man count, and there's still like 30 or 35 seconds left on the clock or something, and they're in office, and they're getting ready to go for their execute, and it seems like they just don't know where the last two players are. So you have one player playing above in uh, billiards, and he has like a, he has a hole looking down on the default plant spot behind the blue bar, and then the other player is just playing around the corner in blue bar. And I guess they just don't know. And and I and I looked and they had like several drones left. I think they had like three or four drones or something. And 35 seconds is enough to at least check those. I mean, there's a, I, I don't know. I don't know why they did it. I mean, Super was dead already. And so maybe they're, that, that got him mixed up because he's usually the guy that plants. Um, and I don't know if they were just on tilt because they lost so many rounds to X set already. And I don't know if I, they just had bad intel, like they thought the players were somewhere else, or because otherwise it, uh, they just didn't know. Well, they definitely didn't know, right? Because they got caught off guard by them. But something went down there, and they lost the round, and it was and it sent them to overtime. And then Sonics take the next round, but then X set closed it out. So NDK looked much improved. He was on, he was in the opening duel for seven of the ten rounds, and he won five of them. So five and two on entry, quite good. Um. Yeah, looking a lot better than he did in his first two games. And maybe Xset just needed that extra week to improve. Uh, maybe Xset will be a strong team going forth. Prod looked quite good in this game. He got several plants, and he had a, he had a good uh, kill-death scoreline even. So maybe they just needed that uh, on-stage team cohesion to start building, and maybe now it's built up. Or maybe it was just a fluke, you know? Sonics are still in second place, and that's... On, on point, they're undeniably second place, uh, as, as we'll show at the end, but uh, like Dark Zero's only played one game, or Sonic's have played like three games, so Dark Zero could, in those games, overtake it. But anyways, they're still in a good spot. It's unfortunate they lost to Exet, which is still, until further proven, I'm going to assume is going to be a bottom table team. But they're well on their way to avoiding relegation, because they're, they're a whole game ahead of Mirage, and if they can beat Mirage in uh, Play Day 4 then they'll be in a really good spot. They'll have the head-to-head, -head and they'll be a full two wins ahead. So we'll see what goes down in there. If Mirage win, then they'll be equal. And if they win in regulation, they'll be equal on points, and Mirage will have the head-to-head. -head, so that'll, that'll make things quite interesting. But it's looking like Mirage might be heading towards relegation, which would be especially unfortunate for Thomas, who played for Xset, and they sucked, and then he got dropped, and then, and, well, man, maybe it's his fault. Uh, yeah, hard to say. Maybe not. Uh, it's very unclear to me. But... Yeah, then he gets picked up by Mirage and they get relegated. That would really suck. I don't think Thomas is a bad player, and I would hate to see him relegated in such a way. Although somebody's got to get, or, well, I guess somebody doesn't have to get relegated. I'm not sure. I think they get to fight for their spot since there's only nine teams. Usually it's a 10th place is auto-relegated and 9th place fights for it, and so now there's no 10th place. We'll see if in the future they add the 10th place or whatever. But, okay, uh, enough rambling on that. The last game of the day, TSM versus B08. Oh, wait. And okay, if I didn't if I didn't say I'm gonna play the clip now before I will play the clip here. Sonics seriously need some insight onto these positions. Might have gotten it from the Twitch drone there. We just saw Rexen hop off, but it could be a smoke in now. They're gonna be playing things very close to the chest now. Creators will take down the initial yeah, frag no here, but they have no idea that Filthy is in this space. They'll have to play it off of audio now. And have let anybody inside of his office, I'm here to assume, as he'll be able to take down at least Krixer. He'll get the second as well as no one's aware of the situation. So I'm not sure if I said it earlier, so that was the clip if it wasn't earlier played. Okay, and Bank, TSM versus Beast Coast. So Data tweeted out before before we saw the ban phase, because they I think they, they do it ahead of time, and then they just show it on stream, like whenever they get to it. Um, he's like, ooh, and you're welcome, NA, and... Uh, so, and so yeah, everyone's like, bank? Bank? And yes, it was bank. So we saw a lot of bank in EU, but this is the first play we've seen in the NAL of bank. And so I was very excited going into it. Um, it's not that different from the way it used to be, but we haven't seen it in a long time. So it's still exciting to see. And TSM absolutely decimated Beast Coast once again. It wasn't a 7-0 like last time, but it is. it was a 7-1. Uh, the first two rounds were flawless rounds by TSM. After four rounds, TSM was up 4-0, and they had 20 kills to Beast Coast's two kills, which is just, like, insane. Incredible. Um, and then the only round they win, they just barely win it. If Achieve had, like, one more second, he was just about to kill Anthony. 
Um, Anthony wasn't even looking at him, and I guess he just didn't know where he was. Yeah, like one more second, and uh, this would have been a 7-0. But not the way it went down. And then TSM just proceeds to win the rest of the game. Uh, most of the rounds, if not all of their defense rounds, Beast Coast did this extended roam, which I suppose you probably have to do on bank because of uh, just the way the map works. But they were they would play they played a lot of Castle Mute Mozzie Vigil, um, so like an, an extended Intel denial roam. They would have several people on like the top floor, but TSM just shut it shut it down so handily every time. Uh, they would just send in like some number of people to the top floor and there was some number of people on the windows and then like somebody else droning I suppose and um, Especially achieved was going crazy he, after like four rounds. I think he was ten and one Maybe it was five rounds. I'm not sure. It might have been five or oh, whatever. He, he, he had a really good scoreline uh, what okay, there was one round I wanted to show in particular and It was oh actually I'm not uh I think, yeah, it must be around, it must be round six. I'm going to assume it's round six, but you'll see, you can look at the round count when we get in. Uh, I think it's round six. It paints a picture of what goes down in a lot of the rounds, uh, is why I want to show it, but Achieve just repels on, well, first he repels on lobby, on a lobby window, and Bolo's in a gunfight with, uh, I think it's, it's sipping on the vigil, and he's in a gunfight, and he, you know, he figures out where he is, they're shooting each other, but they're not hitting. And then Achieve just gets on the window and kills him. So that's the opening kill. Then he switches and he gets on the uh, other windows the that look into like CEO and stuff. And he throws a frag grenade through a window. And there's a castle window protecting this guy, but not from a frag. So he gets blown up. And then another guy just walks into Achieve's sights and he just quickly gets killed. A really quick 3k. And he does that kind of thing in several rounds where he's just on the windows. And he's throwing in frags and he's shooting people and he just... Uh, Chivo was an absolute monster in this game, which is good to see from him because he hasn't been as monstrous lately as he has been in the past. Um, I always thought Chivo was a very impressive player, being not only a, a good slayer, but the IGL for the team. So, I, okay, I, I do it in a particular way where I like to say the clip is here, so, uh, if, <laughs> and I can't remember if I just said it or not, yeah, the clip is going to be right. If it wasn't earlier, it's going to be here. Sippin's gonna try his luck one more time with a position towards the front lobby. No drones here either. Bolo's usually been fairly cautious with this approach, and once again, it's the same for this round. He's gonna catch the moves from Sippin, although he's not able to eliminate him. That job will fall to Achieved on an alternate angle. As you'd expect out of TSM, it's the team play that gets them through this instead of the individual. They'll take down Sippin. Although they might run into some more obstacles early here. We got a pulse downstairs in archives that'll give up a lot of this intel for Beast Coast. What they can oh get done goodness. and achieved. He has been. Oh my god! Okay. And I, sh I need to keep better track of that. Right. And so the other. I could have shown this. Uh, Geo gets a 4K, 1v1 disable. Big. Uh, you know, cl clutch the round. Not that they needed it, but it just helped close out the game faster. But I, I wanted to show the, the achieved play because I think it illustrates what went on in this game a little bit better. This is another case of a plant being disabled, and did we have another one? I think we had another one earlier, didn't we? Uh, but throughout the first... I, I think I mentioned an input. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm... Oh yeah, right here. Um, most plants end up winning the team the round, but it's becoming less and less so. For the first, like, however many games, it was 100% win rate off of plants, and then Xset got disabled against once, and then now two more times today this happened. So the win rate is altering. Okay. So that's that. Those are the games. I think I covered everything I want to talk about. Hopefully I didn't miss anything, uh, but I do want to go over the uh, the standings before I conclude. So as I alluded to earlier, we have a big, massive tie. Uh, third through eighth, all at the same number of points, but it's not technically a tie because, well, some teams have different round differentials, but actually these guys have all the same round differentials. Uh, Beast Ghost, Astralis, and Xset. But, right, some teams have played different numbers of games than other teams. So, Oxygen, Sonics, uh, Astralis, Xset, and Mirage have all played three games. So that means all these guys, it's all these guys in the middle, actually, have only played two or one games. A DZ, only one, and then everyone else, two. So there are still more points on the table for them than the other teams. But uh, Oxygen, undisputed first place. I mean, they won three out of three. The only team, okay, only two teams haven't lost the game, and that's Auction and uh, Dark Zero, and only one team hasn't won a game, and that's Mirage. 
So yeah, uh, this could go a lot of different ways. These three teams are perfectly tied other than uh, other than differential. But they they both they all three have three points and um, two games played. Sonics are still uh, second place for now, but they can be caught up by I guess Dark Zero. And if Dark, if Dark Zero goes one and one, they'll be tied. And if SSG goes one and zero, oh, TSM Beast goes one and zero, oh. so they can be caught. But uh, they're still in a good place for now. I, I I mean I guess that's all I want to talk about for standings because it's not terribly interesting. I think probably a lot of this should get broken up in the next uh, set of games. TSM and Dark Zero play, so that'll uh, differentiate those two teams on points. And who else is playing? Um, it's X, X at Mirage, so that'll uh, give... Well, either it'll perfectly tie them on points, or it'll, uh, you know, create some sort of gap or something. Right, so that's that. That's play day, that was play day three. And I, I guess that's all I want to say, so I will conclude it here. I'll catch you in the next video.